Good afternoon. I welcome our viewers from across the globe today. And thank you for being part of this show. Today we're going to talk about France and Haiti. And it appears there is no hiding place for France anymore. France is that arrogant new colonial power that is now being dragged left, right, and center from West Africa to and now to the Caribbean. So the many sins of France committed centuries ago appear to have caught up with her. Now to continue our story, I want to read from the Guardian publication, the Guardian Online, that's the UK Guardian, the publication on the 18th of April, 2024. It is titled, France urged to pay billions of dollars to Haiti for independence ransom. So it, it says, Coalition of Civil Society Group says Paris should return harsh reparations imposed on Caribbean state 200 years ago. France should pay billions of dollars to Haiti to cover a debt formerly enslaved people were forced to pay in return for recognizing the island's independence, according to a coalition of civil society groups that is launching a new push for reparations. Now let us stop there for one moment. The people of Haiti, the nation of Haiti, they revolted against a French oppressive rule and French presence in their territory in that nation more than two centuries ago. Now the revolt was successful. And what did France do? France now decided that they have to force the people of Haiti to pay ransom in order for France to recognize the independence of Haiti. Now, it was under duress that the leadership of Haiti at that moment in time decided to, uh, um, to accept this particular uh, reparations request from France. So they started paying. And now let me continue with this story in The Guardian. It said the Caribbean island state became the first in the region to win its independence in 1804 after a revolt by enslaved people. But in a move that many Haitians blame for two centuries of turmoil, France later imposed harsh reparations for lost income, and that debt was only fully repaid in 1947. So in 1947, the nation of Haiti succeeded in paying off the first debt imposed on them by France. So you see a situation where the oppressor now asks the oppressed, you must pay me, otherwise I'm going to invade and I'm going to destroy everything. That was the situation the people of Haiti found themselves in about 200 years ago. Now, let, let me continue with this article. The group of about 20 non-governmental organizations currently in Geneva for a UN permanent forum on people of African descent are seeking a new independent commission to oversee the restitution of the debt which they refer to as a ransom. They say the money should go to public works in Haiti, where a transition council was installed this month in an effort to restore security after a period of devastating violence by armed groups. The publication continues. What's important is that it's time that France recognizes this and we move forward. Monique Kleska, a Haitian civil society activist who is coordinating the efforts, told Reuters. The French Foreign Ministry did not immediately respond to a request for comment. France, whose development agency has 
given hundreds of millions of dollars to Haiti, has previously referred to a moral debt owed to Haiti. The amount paid to France is disputed by historians, although the New York Times estimated that Haiti lost 21 billion US dollars. Now, in order to drive this home, it is important to let my viewers understand what the value of $21 billion that Haiti paid to France, what this value is. Remember that we said that Haiti finally paid off this debt in 1947. Now there's something that happened between 1945 and I think 1948. That was the end of the Second World War. And now the Americans, they came up with what they call the Marshall Plan. The Marshall Plan was an American initiative to rebuild a devastated Europe after the Second World War. So the Americans, they injected five billion US dollars into the Marshall Plan. We're talking about five billion US dollars. Now, if the people of Haiti, or if the nation of Haiti, paid France 21 billion US dollars, or something within that range, in 1947, in other words, the, 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 this amount of money uh, is the cumulative total of what they have paid for, to France over the centuries, then you begin to understand the value of $21 billion about a couple of decades ago. I'm talking specifically of 1947. Now let's drive this home. The article says it is $21 billion plus 200 years of interest that France has enjoyed. So we're talking more like $150 billion US dollars or $200 billion US dollars or more said Jamie Mapier, a professor of global race at the University of British Columbia. Now, to my viewers across the globe, you often hear about violence in Haiti. You hear about gangs. You hear about street fights. You hear about poverty. You hear about muggings, you hear about shootings, and you begin to wonder, what is it with the Haitians that there's so much violence and disorder and chaos in that place? Now, I've just told you a story, and that story tells us exactly why you have such chaos. The money that should have been used to develop Haiti was paid to France over a period of 200 years. France imposed a punitive debt on Haiti for, and, and the Haitians were paying this debt to France for over 200 years. So you now see the root of the poverty, the root of the underdevelopment that is going on now in Haiti. For generations after independence, the Haitians were forced to pay the descendants of their former slave masters, their oppressors. They were forced to pay them. And a number of European institutions, especially European banks, they profited from this oppression. They profited from this oppression. A number of uh, European families became wealthy by reason of this oppression. France was in control of the treasury of Haiti, and Haiti had to uh, endure. They, had, they experienced uh, uh, serious, serious violations of their territorial integrity, their sovereignty. They endured many kinds of invasion from, uh, from America, for example. To drive this point home, and in order to understand what was going on there, I'd like to refer to an article written by Dan Sperling, and that article was published in Forbes.com on December 6, 2017. 
and I quote, In 1825, barely two decades after winning it, its independence against all odds, Haiti was forced to begin paying enormous reparations to the French slaveholders it had overthrown. Now, by complying with an ultimatum that amounted to extortion, Haiti gained immunity from French invasion, relief from political and economic isolation, and a crippling debt that took 122 years to pay off. So what did Haiti gain in return? They, they were saved the agony of French military invasion. They were isolated, and then they were forced to pay crippling debt for the next 122 years. Can you imagine what was going on there? Well, it's interesting to note that the people of Haiti are not alone in demanding reparation because the UN appears to be on board now. The UN appears to be sympathetic to the cause of reparation, especially uh, reparation to Haiti. Now, I want to read from a Reuters report of 25th of March, 2024. It's very, very uh, recent. That's a statement credited to the United Nations Secretary General. It is titled, UN Chief Calls for Slavery Reparations to Overcome Generations of Discrimination. And the report says, and I quote, United Nations Chief Antonio Guterres called on Monday for reparations over the transatlantic trafficking of enslaved people as a way to tackle its legacy in today's society, including systemic racism. The article says from the 15th to the 19th century, at least 12.5 million Africans were kidnapped, forcibly transported by European ships and merchants and sold into slavery. Those who survived the brutal voyage ended up toiling on plantations in the Americas, mostly in Brazil and the Caribbean, while others profited from their labor. In a statement to mark the UN International Day of Remembrance of the Victims of Slavery, Guterres said, the past laid the foundation for a violent discrimination system based on white supremacy. And I want to say I agree with that assessment. The root of racism that we experience today is traced back to that era. Now, Guterres says, we call for reparatory justice frameworks to help overcome generations of exclusion and discrimination. In September, a UN report suggested countries should consider financial reparation to compensate for slavery. The idea of paying reparations and making other amends for slavery has a long history, but the movement has been gaining momentum worldwide. So the UN is on board and is in support of the payment of reparations. Now to underscore the UN commitment, a forum to discuss this matter was held a few days ago in Geneva, Switzerland. The UN convened under the auspices of the Permanent Forum on the People of African Descent. And now in his speech, the UN Human Rights Chief urged states to act on slavery reparation. I want to read from an article published on the 19th of April 2024 by the uh, US news.com. In that article, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Volker Turk, was quoted as stating as follows, and I quote, the UN Human Rights Chief called for countries to take concrete steps on reparation for people of African descent at a UN meeting on Friday, adding his voice to calls for justice for slavery atrocities. Now, support is building among Africa and the Caribbean nations for the creation of a tribunal to address reparations, which might include financial payments and other amends for crimes dating back to the transatlantic trade of enslaved people. 
And now the UN Human Rights Chief said, I join your demand for action now. On reparations, we must finally enter a new era. Governments must step up to show true leadership with genuine commitments to move swiftly from words to action that will adequately address the wrongs of the past. Now, so the question now is, as we begin to round up, will France pay up? Is France going to pay? Well, your guess is as good as mine, and it would be nice to have your comments on this matter. I would gladly receive your comments on this matter. But if we have to go by the statements already credited to the Netherlands and to Britain, then you may well conclude that the former slave owners and the former uh, uh, slavers do not have any plans at all to pay any reparation. So the Netherlands, for example, according to this report, has apologized for its role in the transatlantic trade and plans a 200 million euro fund to address the past. So uh, the Dutch government, they are planning a 200 million euro to address the wrongs of the past. My question is, how much money is being spent right now to finance a proxy war in Ukraine? And then on April 16, 2024, the UK government, in response to this matter, they published a statement titled UK Statement at the UN General Assembly Permanent Forum on People of African Descent. And I read, it says, thank you, Madam Chair, the UK is proud of its diversity and of the successful multinational, multi-ethnic and multi-faith country that we have become. While we are making great progress towards establishing a fairer and more inclusive society, we understand the importance of continuing to work to address negative ethnic and racial disparities that affect certain groups, particularly for those of African and Caribbean descent. We published our landmark Inclusive Britain Action Plan in March 2022, which aims to tackle long-standing ethnic disparities in health, education, employment, and the justice system. We have made significant progress implementing the 74 actions in the plan, including one, developing a new national framework for how the use of police powers can be scrutinized more effectively by local communities. Two, publishing new guidelines for employers on how to use positive action in the workplace and how to measure and address ethnic pay gaps. Three, taking steps to address health disparities. And then the UK government statement concluded as follows. He said, as we track our own unwavering dedication to eradicating all forms of racism, racial discrimination, and xenophobia, for example, through our continued progress in the World Values Survey, will also reflect on our complex national path. From an era of empire and colonialism to one of pride, a multicultural, modern, and diverse society. Recognizing that the appalling atrocity of slavery marks our history, we express our sincere regret that it could have occurred. We believe that the most effective way for the UK to respond to the wrongs of the past is to ensure that the current and future generations learn from it. For that reason, we are dedicated to establishing a fairer world today. So the UK did not make any mention at all of any plan to pay reparations to anybody. Did you see that even in that statement, there was no mention of the word reparation. So you now see that the thinking of the former slave owners, the former enslavers, you see the, the line along which they think. So your guess is as good as mine whether the French government would pay billions 
in reparation to Haiti. Now, I want to thank my viewers for watching. And if you have enjoyed what we have done in this video, consider to subscribe. Consider also to like. Consider to share the work that we do, because when you do all this, you help our channel to grow. Consider, like I said, to also send in comments. We want to know what the people of the world, what my viewers, what their opinion is about what's going on. And then lastly, I just want to encourage you to support our growth by way of purchase of super thanks and also by way of uh, becoming a member of this channel. And once again, I say thank you. Bye.